I'm Hayley from Life Science Centre, and one of our favourite parts of the centre is the planetarium. The planetarium may currently be closed, but fortunately we can still see the real night sky from a window or our back doors. I'm going to show you how to find a few things in the nighttime sky. The things I've chosen to show you are visible from the middle of the city or from the countryside. To help us show you these things, we're going to use some free software called Stellarium. If you do head outside tonight and it is a little bit cloudy, don't worry, the things I'm going to show you are visible for at least the next few weeks. We're also going to show you two science demonstrations that you can try at home anytime. Tonight the sun sets at 8.50, but you'll need to wait until the sky is completely dark to be able to see all of the stars. This will happen about an hour later. Once it is nice and dark, have a look towards the north and you want to try and find seven bright stars that make a pattern that look like a saucepan. You will need to look quite high in the sky to find this at the moment. This famous pattern has a few names. In America, it's known as the Big Dipper. In Wales, they call it the Sosban. And here in England, it's known as the Plough. The Plough is an asterism. That just means it's a famous pattern in the sky, but not one of the 88 official star pictures or constellations. It is part of a constellation, and that constellation is called Ursa Major. The other stars in Ursa Major are a bit fainter than the seven in the plough, so they can be a bit trickier to spot, especially from a city. Ursa Major is the Great Bear. It's also what we call a circumpolar constellation, and that just means if you live in the northern hemisphere, you should be able to see it any night of the year at any time, as long as it's not cloudy. Once you've found the plough, you can use it to help you find other things in the nighttime sky. I'm going to spin us around so that we're facing towards the south and so that the plough kind of looks the right way up. And then if you imagine a line coming down from, ooh, shooting star, if you imagine a line coming down from the pan end and keep looking in that direction, you should find a pattern that looks like a backwards question mark. At the bottom of this is a star that looks quite bright and even a little bit blue. This star is called Regulus and it's part of the constellation Leo. And Leo is the lion. If we head back to the plough and this time use the handle end and imagine a line arcing or curving across the sky, we get to a very, very bright star. This one can look a bit orange or red to us, and it's the fourth brightest star we'll ever see in the sky, so it's definitely one of the brightest things you'll be able to see tonight. This one is called Arcturus, and it's part of the constellation Buertes, which I always think looks like an ice cream cone, but it's actually a herdsman. If we then continue our curving, arcing line across the sky and keep looking in that direction, we get to another quite bright star, not quite as bright as Arcturus though, but again looks blue just like Regulus did. This one is called Spica, and it's part of the constellation Virgo. The other stars in Virgo are quite tricky to spot, they're very very faint, and at the moment the moon is in the constellation of Virgo, so the moonlight can kind of block out some of the stars from view. Today, the moon will rise at 4.30 in the afternoon. That means it's possible to see the moon even before the sun has set. Today, the moon is in its gibbous phase, and that means it looks a bit egg-shaped. In just a few days, on Thursday the 7th, we will be able to see a full moon. We see different phases of the moon because the sun can only shine on half of the moon at a time. The moon is kind of like a big mirror. It reflects the light of the sun. And depending on which part it's shining on, we can see different shapes. When we look at the moon, we can see different colors and different patterns on its surface. These darker patches are called seas. They're not seas of water. They're made of a rock called basalt. And that rock came from ancient volcanoes. They're often easier to see if you have a pair of binoculars that you can use. Even a really cheap pair will give you a slightly better view. We also have all of these circles. These are called craters. This one over here is called Copernicus, and this big one down at the bottom is called Tycho. 
Amy is going to show us a science demonstration about how those craters formed. Hello! If you look carefully at those craters on the moon that Haley mentioned, you might also notice some lines coming out from them, which we call ejecta rays. I'm going to show you how craters and rays are formed when things crash into the surface of the moon. Things like big space rocks. Here is my model of the moon's surface and my impactors, stuff that crashes into the moon. If I drop an impactor from directly above, you'll see it forms a crater and some of the material that was underneath the surface gets churned up and sprayed out in lots of directions to form those ejecta rays. You might spot some craters on the moon which have more rays on one side than another, like Tycho, which Haley mentioned. That happens when the impactor strikes the moon from a different angle, like in my second throw here. Tycho's impactor came from a low western angle. You can see how this time the rays mostly spray out from one side, so it looks quite different to the first crater. The size and shape of the impactor makes a difference too. For my next throw, I picked a bigger impactor. This time, the crater is bigger and more material is churned up and sprayed out to form the ejecta rays. Sometimes, craters and rays from multiple impacts overlap, which has happened here. The moon isn't the only really bright thing in the sky at the moment though. Over the last few months, I've noticed something else as well, and you might have spotted it too. Haley is going to tell us a bit more about it. Thanks Amy, I love those slow motion clips. That bright thing you mentioned is visible if you look towards the west, and it might look quite a lot like a star, but it's not. It's actually a planet. It's the planet Venus. An easy way to know if what you're looking at is a planet or if it's a star is to see if it twinkles. If it is twinkling, it's a star. If it's not, you've probably found yourself a planet. Another easy way to find Venus is that it's one of the very first things to appear in the sky after the sun has set. My favourite fact about Venus is that it's the hottest planet in our solar system, but it's not the closest planet to the sun. That's Mercury. I'm going to hand you over to Ben, who's going to explain why Venus is so hot. Thanks, Haley. Venus isn't the closest planet to the sun, but it is the hottest, with the average temperature on Venus being 462 degrees Celsius. To put that into perspective, the average oven in your household goes up to 250 degrees. So it's much, much hotter than the hottest setting on your oven. And that's all to do with the atmosphere. It's made 96% carbon dioxide. So I've got two identical jars here and they've both been sat on my windowsill for the past couple of hours gathering sunlight. This jar just contains normal air and this jar has more carbon dioxide in it. And I'm gonna use my really cool infrared thermometer to have a look and see what the temperatures are inside. So the one that just has earth air in it the temperature inside there is 19.1 degrees Celsius. Relatively cool day today. But the one that is mimicking Venus with more carbon dioxide gas, well, that is 22.9 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't quite have the 96% carbon dioxide that Venus's atmosphere does, and it has only been sat on the windowsill for a couple of hours. Where when you think of Venus that has such a high concentration and has been orbiting the sun for billions of years, it's quite easy to see why it is the hottest planet in the solar system. Back to you, Hayley. Thanks, Ben. It's amazing to think that a planet can get that hot. Good luck with your stargazing. I hope you have nice clear skies tonight. If you do find anything that we've talked about, or if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. You could even have a go at taking a photo of the moon or Venus. You can get some nice ones using just a smartphone camera. If you do take any, send them to us using hashtag life goes online.